Listen up, slap nuts. This is the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett, the founder and CEO of Global Force Wrestling. And you're listening to The Joe Cronin Show. What's up, wrestling fans? It's Joe Cronin. And I know that you have been waiting for this for a long time. Jeff Jarrett is in the WWE is going in the WWE Hall of Fame. Oh, my God, it's unbelievable. Pull your shirts off. But no, seriously, I really believe he deserves it. I know that I, I said that the other day, and people were kind of, like, mocking it and stuff. But, you know, with some of the people that have been in there, I mean, Jeff Jarrett is one of the more middle ground people that deserves it, and I think he definitely deserves it. He's like a... His, his, it's not just him, too. It's his family in the business of wrestling. Uh, it's his legacy. In the business of wrestling, um, just there's there's a lot of stuff. Emma recently uh, giving an interview about her past in the WWE and what she did with the whole Emma Lena thing and not being comfortable. God, remember that? That was one of the worst things ever. 17 weeks of torture, only to be told it was all a joke anyway. I mean, that would, to me, that goes down. That's like gobbledygooker stuff. You know what I mean? That's like, probably it was worse because... If I was a regular fan, I'd just say, oh, whatever, if she's coming or if she's not, I don't, I don't really care. But because we were really, like, trying to figure out what was going to happen and when she was going to show up as, like, reviewers here, um, you know, doing wrestling rumors and stuff like that, that was, like, really infuriating because we had all these, what she could do with it and what they're going to do. And I remember the only thing, the only thing validating in this was that we said, or especially I said, I don't know what everybody else said. I did not want Emma to change whatsoever. I loved the glasses and the biker look and what she did and her music. I loved everything about her. She was already perfect. And to go into this Emily, Emmalina thing was just so stupid anyway. Emmalina. I mean, it was just fucking, it was ridiculous. But anyway, let's talk about Roman Reigns being in jail uh, or jailed accuser talking about Roman Reigns, how he beat, um, how did he beat the uh, testing to, to test positive? Now, we know that Reigns already tested positive for something else, so I guess he's not talking about that. But uh, Richard Rodriguez, former owner of the Iron Addicts gym in Miami, was interviewed by John Bravo, who revealed that Roman Reigns was one of his clients in the steroid distribution ring. Um, he said, I have never... In a statement that was sent uh, via Wrestling Inc. from Reigns stating, I have never... Wow, they sent it to him? I have never heard of Richard Rodriguez or Wellness Fitness Nutrition. I learned from the mistake I made nearly two years ago, paid the penalty for it. Since then, I passed 11 tests as part of WWE's independent drug testing program. In a following video, Rodriguez said that he would provide snippets of proof via text message, tracking numbers, and addresses where products were shipped uh, being tied to each individual culprit. So that's pretty crazy. Um, depending on the individual's uh, professions, let's give an example. Basketball players, they say. Uh, football players, wrestlers, regarding public figures. Uh, they all go through scrutiny of the following. They undergo rigorous testing to search for testosterone, HGH, consistently in their bodies, said Rodriguez. Hence why they take people like me and others very well uh, to secure they know these procedures and ensure that they will pass them with flying colors. So oftentimes, people might take shorter um, suspension-based products uh, that could be out of their system prior to being tested. So I guess he's saying taking smaller doses at a time or something. We, we all know that WWE is a publicly traded company and they claim to possess some of the most strict testing requirements of their athletes, said Rodriguez. However, the harsh reality is those kind of physiques are never attainable without drugs, he added. You cannot walk around 250 plus pounds, 4% body fat without using substances. Hence why it's sad to see these kind of people are considered role models misled the public mislead the public and their followers jesus this guy what why is this guy so mad at them he's really he's like jealous or mad that they're not being exposed i guess i don't know having worked with various wrestlers and people in the fields that are similar one would deny utilization of these substances 100 percent of the time in hopes of salvaging their livelihood because they have nothing else going for themselves you have to understand that many of these people expect to have a very short lifespan first and foremost on their profession and spending their entire life mastering one aspect of their lives uh, I, I get his point I get what he's saying 
But like, what? Where's the? I guess where's the real proof? I don't see the proof here. I mean, I guess he's got addresses. I'm not seeing this proof here. So, and I and I guess the the, the idea is again that they're, you're doing it in smaller doses or whatever. So he says he knows. Why is he so obsessed with? I guess because he got called a liar, I suppose. You know, if, if he said, like, hey, this guy did it, this guy did it, that guy did it, and then one of the guys says he didn't do it, now the guy's responding. I suppose that's what that's about. Uh, WWE is, before I get out of here, WWE is reportedly planning to hold a 100,000-seat event this year. Uh, WWE is looking to hold one of their biggest events in 2018, according to Sportster. Um, and it says the uh, the MCG Melbourne Cricket Ground is looking to host more big events going forward, and WWE wants to capitalize on this desire. The venue has a capacity for over 100,000. Uh, it's the tenth largest stadium in the world. It has been host to the Summer Olympics and multiple other things. I'm not going to read. Uh, whether it be a traditional pay per view or non traditional pay per view or WWE live event is still unconfirmed. But the aim is to come as close to possible as selling out the venue. Regarding the past WWE pay-per-views like WrestleMania 32 in Dallas, it broke the 100K threshold with 101,763,000 people. Um, I'm sorry, 101,763 people. Although this number had varied in accuracy, I, I think we all decided that they really came close to about 90,000 with, you know, in the arena. You know what I mean? Like there was probably 90,000 physical people in that arena, despite 101 and over being sold apparently. Others uh, coming close to 100K were WrestleMania 3 at the Pontiac, Michigan, uh, 93,173 there. That number is also disputed. Probably go back to 85,000 if you want to be compromised. But uh, WrestleMania 29 in East Rutherford, New Jersey, 80,000. SummerSlam 92 in London, 80,000. WrestleMania 23 in Detroit, uh, up to 80,000 as well. The report was WWE and MCG are working hard. Uh, to come to an agreement on this. Now, I, I assume that MCG renting the stadium, the price would drop because they're really trying to hit this this record or whatever they're trying to do or host more events there. So I assume that their asking price for the stadium would be much lower, and that's why it's even acceptable right now for the WWE to, to sort of consider this uh, in a house show or other pay-per-view environment. That's got to be what it is. But, hey, if it's not if it's not WrestleMania and it's 100,000 people and it's not WrestleMania, that's going to be exciting to see a big, gigantic event like that um, that isn't even WrestleMania next year or the year after or whenever it is. But how weird will it be if WrestleMania isn't even as big as that show will be or could be? So bizarre. But anyway, guys, what do you think about all this news? I'll leave it down in the comments below. And guess what? I know you want more, so I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to play for you a clip from the Corrupted Podcast that's available on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. For $2 a month, you can hear this uh, podcast every two weeks. Every week, rather. It's every week. It's every week for two hours. Um, but here is a great moment. We talked about they're bringing back the Karate Kid. Did you guys know that? The Karate Kid is coming back, the original Karate Kid, and it's going to be on television. Unbelievable. Plus, Artie Lang does cocaine. That clip coming up right now. Stick around for more. Here it is. And I'll see you guys tonight for the Monday Night Raw review. It was dumb, and nobody will do it. Yeah, yeah, he's got to learn, bro. But, oh, by the way, did you guys see that they, they're making that TV show based on the Karate Kid? No. They're, they're making, making a TV show with the same actors, um, Ralph Macchio, and the guy who played, I, I forget the actor's name, that played his rival in The Karate Kid. That guy opens up the Cobra Kai studio again. Well, dopamine, yes, thank you. Wait a minute. So this, uh, the original actors are coming back? Right. They're coming back. <laughs> what the fuck? The original villain is going to reopen the Cobra Kai studio. And then Daniel's son, I, I don't know if he opens his own karate studio, but like, yeah, it's going to be a show. It's going to be, I don't wouldn't know if it's it going to be a great TV they, show. Wouldn't it be good if they just made it a comedy instead? They open up across <laughs> from each other and they're like competing against each other to try to get people to come to their dojo. <laughs> Like, like, there's kids walking by, and they're like, hey, you know, you should join my dojo, you know, and then the kid's like, fuck you, I, I like, I'm going home to play fucking Call of Duty. <laughs> exactly, exactly, because they don't give a fuck about that shit now. So no. then the, the, the Cobra guy across the street, he he sends his lanky, lackey guy to China, and he invades one of those fucking sweatshops, and, uh, <laughs> and takes all the kids, and then, like, for like three weeks puts them in a window and lines them up and gets them doing all this karate stuff and then it, that attracts people from the outside who want to be karate people too and then then he signs up the white people and then he ships the chinese people back and none of the white people knew these weren't even japanese people it's a <laughs> yeah, fucking they amazing think they all look the same <laughs> yeah it'd be like <laughs> it'd be like that movie uh neighbors or whatever the fuck that one that came out recently 
where the like the neighbors were having all those sorority parties or whatever. Oh right, right. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, I'd be like that. You know, the the, the dojo. It'd be fucking crazy. Yeah, that. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, they they in, they infiltrate the Foxconn where they're fucking making cell phones and they just hire them and, to put them in the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and then right at the beginning, you know, he comes over. He goes, you know, Daniel's son. He fucking he opened it up first, right? So of course the Cobra guy opened his second, right, and copied him or whatever. And then he comes over and Daniel's like, so you're opening up a dojo too? And he goes, yeah, right next door. And then then he walks over and he goes, and Mr. Miyagi's ashes are on the fucking desk. Oh. And he just grabs it. <laughs> he goes, he goes. Uh, so uh, it's so sad that uh, that he's that he passed on, you know. And then Daniel's like, "Yeah, yeah, he was a great man." He goes, "Yeah, he sure was." And then he just grabs him and then dumps him upside down. And fucking, <laughs> he fucking dumps him over Daniel's head. Like, <laughs> oh my god, there's your fucking master for How about you. How's that? that? <laughs> oh my god, they start the movie like that, and Daniel's like, you know, he's he closes his eyes and he gets really angry for a second, and then he goes, "Your old." Your your master was nothing but a stupid gook, and then fucking <laughs> and, Jesus Christ! And then and then two bully guys come in from the side, and then they beat the shit out of him for a second, and, and, and then one of the guys eats the ashes, and and then and then oh and then, and then Daniel ashes are you dead fuzzing? And, and then Daniel has like one student only, and he's there watching this whole thing, and then the parents of the kid go, "Let's get out of here," and then as they walk by, he goes. You know, you couldn't even protect yourself against those men. You're a shitty teacher, the kid says. <laughs> yeah, as he's <laughs> as he's still covered in fucking Mr. Miyagi's ashes. <laughs> yeah, no. like it's on his nose and shit, like a pile of them. <laughs> like <laughs> I remember how Yokozuna used to take like the salt and like throw it up yeah, in the air and shit. Yeah. That's how I looked like he was throwing the fucking ashes. <laughs> and the whole the whole reason the Cobra guy started this gym and shit is because he wants to make money, right? Like, he's going to make a lot of money, and, like, Daniel's car is, like, broken down and shit. So then Daniel just says, you know what? Fuck all this fucking fighting and karate shit. And he just opens up a fucking candy store. And then he outsells the guy. And then that's the end of the movie is he becomes rich off fucking karate candy bars. And his fucking partner is Artie Lang from Beer League. Like... <laughs> Dude, I would watch this show. I would, I would watch that show. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with us, dude? What the fuck? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen. We uh, have a beer league. <laughs> like, like you see, you see Artie Lang, like, walks up to him, with his, and, and Daniel's son still got the ashes on his fucking nose, and Artie Lang takes the ashes and puts them in a pipe and just starts smoking. Yeah. Him in front. No, he takes yeah. it with his finger, and he rubs it off his face, and he... <laughs> He he rubs on his gums like it's coke. Like <laughs> he's fucking what? sniffing. And, and, and from then on, from then on, the whole series, he has this fucking awful sneeze. Now he just can't shake. Like Tommy NC when he sneezes now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so the joke is like, Artie, Artie after he fucking sniffs the ashes, he goes, <laughs> and then, they, so then he's like, oh man, this what a I've never sneezed like that before. And then like the next episode, he comes over or something, and he goes, oh, he goes, oh, man, I've been I've been doing that ever since I snorted that amazing cocaine yesterday. And he's like, and that every was time he sneezes, he gets like a fucking he wants to wax fucking classic cars <laughs> and paint fences and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sand and floors. <laughs> so then he's gonna go see a doctor, and the doctor's uh fucking uh Dave, what's his face from fucking Curb Your Enthusiasm? <laughs> oh fucking um Larry David. Larry David, yeah, it's fuck. His doctor's Larry David. He doesn't do anything oh. to help him. He's <laughs> like, I sniffed this cocaine. He's like, well, I don't see anything wrong with you. And then Larry's just like, well, I swear, doc, something. <laughs> 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 and like you know he does this until he finally dies in real life and then they have to just write him off at some point <laughs> yeah dude I can't believe he's still alive bro he does a fucking lot of damage to his body that fuck if guy. you oh. put if you put him in like one of those fucking hospital outfits like or like at hospice bed like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> hospice bed dude what the fuck <laughs> And then, and then, fucking Danny, Corn, <laughs> Danny Corns from the shot has to fucking put him to sleep. <laughs> he said, "Put him in a hospice bed." <laughs> like, motherfuckers. <laughs> if you could, if you I could, can't breathe, can't breathe. 
<laughs> he said out of nowhere, put him in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> look, I'm convinced that he's in the top ten people that are walking around that look like they should be dead. He's yeah, in that he top looks 10. like like Yoda right before he dies in like the Yoda death scene. Like, yeah. he's like sick and fucking dead. Imagine Yoda in a hospice bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you put him next to Artie and have people vote on who's going to die, He Artie might win. Dude, I'm really sick I am. It's got to be it's got to be Artie, about Yoda, to die. and when E.T. is all sick hey, in the middle. I'm about to die, I might. Remember when we were doing name famous people who could fucking, who's going to, you know, uh, die get the next. sexual harassment charges? Oh, oh, right, right, right. It's a good bit. Maybe we should do something like, you know, like Howard Stern used to do because he used to have the death pool. Right. We should do a fucking death pool, like where you could fucking call in and pick and pick a somebody who you think is gonna be dead. You got to stick with that one pick, and you get like two months to like keep that pick, you know, going and see if they die or not. And, like he would definitely be. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the picture you just put up, dude. <laughs> If this wasn't, it wasn't for this bright flash bulb, he would look like a fucking shell of a fucking man. Look, look at his nose. Look at his nose. He looks like Ben Franklin's corpse, dude. What? It, <laughs> if you could, if you could, uh, be, if you could take uh, Gary Busey's brain and put a physical image to it, you'd get Artie Lang's face. <laughs> Here he is. Look at this. That's Artie, man. He's like dressed up. Oh. I'm like what? <laughs> he got a snow hat and sunglasses because <laughs> it's probably fucking ninety degrees out. You know why? It's because he just sniffed fucking uh, Mr. Miyagi's ashes right here. That's what that is. <laughs> That's why he looks like this. Look at that. That ain't even a real Electra voice that he's using. He's using the mock-up, the three hundred dollar one, not even the four hundred dollar. Dude, he looks like King Boo in Super Mario World, dude. Joe. <laughs> Joe. Yo. 